proposition for this work. So uh, let's begin with the history context. The um, first modern humans who arrived in the Southeast Asia arrived 4,000 years ago, and they were the ancestors of um, the um, Aus uh, aborigines in Australia and Papu uh, populations in New Guinea, and they are called uh, uh, Melanesians. These people are identified as the Melanesians uh, populations in many uh, historical and ha archaeological um, papers. And in those times, 4,000 years ago, uh, the sea levels were different, uh, and the bold line represents the, max the minimum sea level. So the, uh, and, and when the sea, the sea was at this level, uh, there were more land to people, humans to migrate in, uh, in the islands. So that's why they can came from Asia down to Australia. The second step is that on about 4,000 years ago, uh, another migration, big migration events began. Uh, it was the beginning of the Austronesian people coming into the islands of Southeast Asia. And the main hypothesis today is that they come from Taiwan. And this uh, hypothesis came from uh, genetic studies. But uh, 4,000 years ago, the boundaries of the islands were nearly like today. So this is for this population, the landscape was really different uh, for, them, for them to migrate, to move, and to settle down, to build new villages. So this is a historical context. And we are interested in this, uh, more in this second step, and the mixing between these two populations of Melanesian and Austronesian. And we are especially inter interested about the genetics uh, behind this uh, mixing. And this is a figure from a paper in 2010. And it's, um, it is the Austronesian percentage of the populations on different points on the map. And you, you have the population with 100% of uh, Austronesian ancestry uh, near, in Asia and in the islands near Asia, and the population with uh, very little of this ancestry uh, east uh, in the east. Yes, in the east. And so the, when you look at these data along, um, versus the longitude, you have the, the black curve, which are the, the observed data, which shows uh, a steep uh, climb, which is, uh, although we are, we are expected more something like the red line, which is more gentle climb along the longitude because uh, it's something you have in in uh, geogra geogra sorry geographical region with no such a landscape as Southeast Asia, without which you have a mainland, no geographical obstacle to for people to move. Um, and the real question of the work is why? Why do we have uh, this? especially these strange um, admixture rates, mixing rates, in the central region of, uh, of, the, of Indonesia, of these islands. Um, so the main hypothesis uh, we have for, to explain this are uh, first the geography, because we have a landscape of islands, you have to, you need to have some kind of sailing te technologies to move uh, efficiently from one one island to another, and this should uh, have a big influence on mi migrations and on the genetics. Uh, you also have some other technological uh, issues about um, population growth and farming because people, the population came, w which came from Asia 4,000 years, 4, years ago, had. Um, more, uh, were more te technologically advanced. And uh, something that is not shown on the picture, but you can see in the genetic data, is that there is uh, something strange in the admixture rate, rates if you look at only the sexual chromosomes, X and Y, and the non-sexual chromosomes, 
that's the 22 chromosomes uh, we have. So there is a difference uh, in the mixing rates. So this tends to show that there is a preferred myriad rules between uh, the Austronesian and Melanesian populations. And the way it should have been is that the Austronesian or Asian women uh, should have preferred to marry with Melanesian men. But it's, it's an hypothesis. Uh, so we, decide, we decided to model this with an agent-based model. So it's a quick explanation of what uh, an agent-based model is. It's a system of autonomous entities that are interacting with each other uh, and that are living on, on an uh, environment. So for my model, the, on, these entities will be the humans. The environment is a geography. And we have interactions between agents uh, that uh, men and women will marry and form families. And uh, between agents and, and the environment for the migration because um, the, um, we have villages with a limited um, amount of place of room and the agents will have to move where there is, there is some space. Uh, more visually, this is the model. So we have uh, our human population divided between um, single agents, which can be male and f or female. And when they marry, they are transformed into a family agent. Uh, so these agents live uh, in villages. And these villages are uh, connected in a network uh, that is uh, points taken on the map of uh, Indonesia and, uh, and Southeast Asia. And the um, edges are weighted, uh, so in the first um, networks, just by the distance, so that uh, agents will prefer to move to a shorter place, uh, a closer, closer place to their uh, village where they were born. Uh, but we, we want to add some other weight uh, to, to be able to, to make a difference between a migration on an island and between islands, and to be able also to uh, take into account the sailing technologies at a certain point. Uh, we have a, as we have two populations, two different groups, the Austronesian and the Melanesians, uh, we want them to have different dynamics, so different migration rates, different fecundities, and different death rates too. And we also need some kind of um, measurement of genome uh, mixing rates, so we need a genome-like structure for the agents. So that's the model. Now let's play with it. Uh, first, we decided to start with a test network, which is very neutral to be able to know uh, if the model is behaving as we, we wanted. So I can show you uh, a few videos of this. No. Sorry, it's not the good one. No. So you can find the network e here where each village is growing or uh, the population is decreasing depending on death and birth rate and exchange between nodes. Here you have the, um, uh, we can follow the population. The black line is the total population. In um, green you have the families, in blue the men and in pink the women. And we, in this special simulation, it was one of the very first to um, to know how the system is behaving. We also can follow the, the age structure of the population. So here that it can be strange at the first look because um, these agents, single agents, really disappear when they form a family. So the age are just uh, shifted in this diagram. But the humans all, all, always live in the system. 
and you can see that uh, some single agents can remain uh, above um, uh, 20 uh, depending on if there is someone you can marry in the village and if there is also uh, somewhere to go, somewhere uh, it's possible to go. Uh, one thing is that is special in the migration pattern is that we only authorized an agent to move once in its life. I'd say um, the way we imagine the population in this time is that uh, um, people will grow up to, let's say, 15. Uh, at the age of 15, they, ca they can marry to someone else. And if they, uh, at its age, they also can, do, uh, can move to just one village that is connected to their um, village where they were born. So this is a very specific dynamic. So an agent cannot cross the whole network in its, in its life. Um, I stop this. And as we are interested by the genetics, uh, this is the um, genetics, uh, the, admix, uh, ad, the percentage of Austronesian ancestry in each village over time. So uh, if you remember the network, I begin with uh, the left part in, uh, f in uh, light blue, which is uh, fully Austronesian uh, villages, and the right part in uh, dark blue, which are, which are fully Melanesian people. And you can see that on this network, the, um, every village is, uh, has a mix, mixed population. And as we want to simulate, this black line is a... Um, the end of uh, regular simulation after 4,000 years. But if we uh, let the simulation go, so we reach an equilibrium point around 0.5% uh, of Austronesian uh, ancestry in the genome, which is what, we, uh, what is intended to be found in such a system. Uh, just a mixing of two populations with, um, with uh, no a very neutral environment and no specific, no specific um, constraint on the network. And the second one will be shorter. Here the network is a bit different because my Austronesian populations are source populations. I said Melanesian people cannot go in the west, cannot go west. So the genetic pattern admixture uh, we have with this kind of simulation is really different. I can speed up simulation eight times. And uh, in this simulation, we also um, get rid of the the edge effect and the corner effect we had in the previous simulation by controlling the size of the population, the size of every village is along the, along the, over time. So this is really a, a good model because it's um, behaving as we intend uh, it should. Sorry. And um, we can make the difference uh, with different starting conditions and different constraints on the network uh, to, have the, yeah, to test different hypotheses that we have uh, for the model. Uh, yes, it was just for the controls, uh, specific controls. So the next step is to, to work on the real network the, the south, the southeast uh, islands of Southeast Asia. So this is really recent. So you may have some criticize on the, on this. Um, it's not a so big network; it's only a hundred of nodes. But we are trying to 
decide now how we can connect this. The first uh, thing we tried is to just connect it by the distance. And it seems to be around the cutoff of 600 or 700 kilometers. We have something that is quite realistic, not too much connected, not too low connected. And uh, this is a starting in the early steps of the simulation. To, you can see some villages that have a, a population that are really decreased, other ones that have increased, especially in Borneo, which is highly connected. And at the end of the simulation, we, uh, we have some places in the network where we have admixture. Uh, and if you look at the evolution of the genetic admixture, you can see that the, you have uh, Austronesian ancestry that have reached almost all nodes or villages in the network. And if you, if you, and we want to have the same curve as the first figure, and we can fit the, the data quite nicely. Here it's not, uh, has the financial situation we want because it's uh, shifted to the west, but it's probably only a matter of starting condition as speed of uh, genetic, um, uh, yes, genetic um, spread out. Uh, so we have a lot of things to do for this model, uh, especially playing on the starting conditions, which because we have many assumptions, many possibilities on these conditions. Uh, we also, at the very beginning of the setting down the network, so the number of nodes may be important, especially per island. We are trying to fit with the size of the island or the length of the coastline, depending of, of the islands. And also when we are building the connections, trying to analyze the connectivity at the neighbor of, of each node. Um, it's also quite slow with the big network, so we have an optimization phase to do and uh, obviously exploring the parameter space for this uh, network. Thank you. It's because you have one line which is from Taiwan there okay. and one line which is from Sumatra there. <laughs> so presumably you could go and construct one of these networks given enough genetic data you could infer how people move back. Do you have any idea how much genetic data you need to, to be able to build that sort of network? Is it anywhere close to being realistic to, to say we're going to connect, collect genetic information and try and infer a complete migration map and infer all of those layered weights in there? For the migration? For the, so um, watching the, the genetic mm -hmm. spread. I don't understand really your question. You, you want what amount of genetic data you need to build the model? To, to build this network. So you're using a network oh. as, as your sort of starting position, and then you run some a genetic simulation, look at where the genetics end up. Yeah. But you could look at it backwards. You could say, I'm going to go and out to the real world, collect all the genetic information that I possibly mm -hmm. can, and then build a network out of it. Oh, you have any idea how much? The data, the data set is already big. It's, uh, it has been done by uh, our Indonesian uh, collaborators. And we have uh, how many? A hundred of individuals? I don't remember. No, sorry? 2,000. In, 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 across Indonesia. So it's quite big, and maybe it's a good idea to, to have a look at this in this way. I don't know if uh, it was something we have thought about. 